Kessler to Raven scores! Hi everyone, welcome to Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, May the 3rd. I hope you like my reenactment of the second goal in the Canucks 5-1 victory Saturday night, taking game one against the Chicago Blackhawks. Today I'm coming to you from my son Sean's bedroom. This room was made famous in our ultimate Canucks haiku video back in 2007. We got the air hockey table, this sort of old school, a few years old at least, Canucks logo, and a bunch of other stuff throughout the room that you can't really see, it's not in camera view. But one thing's for sure, my son Sean is indeed hockey crazy. Speaking of Sean, I asked him to help me out today, but I'm not sure where he is. So there he is. I think you're missing something. Go get it. Now I must admit, I was slightly disappointed in Saturday night's game. Now don't get me wrong, Canucks fans, I was absolutely thrilled that we pummeled them, thrashed them, destroyed them, gave them one of these. But, given the anticipation of this game, given the build-up, all the media hype, all the talk about Bufflin, Big Butt, Lad, Kessler, all that kind of stuff, the game was never really in doubt, especially after that second goal by Raymond, the one that I reenacted for you just a few minutes ago. In fact, I was telling a good friend of mine that Saturday night's game reminded me of the Canada-Russia quarterfinal in the 2010 Winter Olympics here in Vancouver this February. That game had a lot of anticipation, a lot of hype, a lot of build-up. And all Canada did was come out in the first period and absolutely throttle the Russians on their way to a 4-1 lead going into the intermission. Both games saw the good guys hold the top scorers for the other team in check. Kane and Taves on Saturday night just let that one power play go in the third period. And in the Canada-Russia game, Ovechkin was held pointless and Malkin had one point. Once Canada and the Canucks respectively asserted themselves, the opposition didn't really have a chance of coming back. In fact, Canada and Vancouver's performances were so dominant that they chased the starting goalies from the opposition net. Nabokov out for the Russians and Niemi out for the Blackhawks. In both matches, while I was obviously happy to see the right team winning, I actually started to almost feel bad for the opposition. Just almost. Of course, there are a couple of fundamental differences between the two games. Firstly, the Olympic quarterfinal was one game, winner take all, winner moves on, loser goes home. And in the Canucks Blackhawks series, this is the first of what could be a seven game series. Also, in the Olympics, Canada was the home team, so they had 18,000 fans cheering them on in Canada Hockey Place. Whereas on Saturday night, Vancouver was the visiting team and had to basically fight against not only the Blackhawks, but that hostile crowd. And they did a great job of taking the crowd out of the game right from the get-go. Now, a few more observations about Saturday night's game. Oh, you're back. Good observation. Nice jersey. Thanks. Firstly, Luongo was in the zone. Luongo. And who cares if he wasn't nominated for the Vesna? Because those three guys are all gone. Ryan Miller? Out. Ilya Brzgalov? Gonzo. Martin Brodeur? Bye-bye. Here's another. This hostility or animosity between the two teams didn't really actually show because there were only two minors in the first period, both to the Canucks, two minor penalties in the second period, both to the Blackhawks, and then about five or six minors in the third for rinky-dink things like cross-checking, hooking, and holding. There were no fighting majors. I was expecting Kessler and Ladd to get it on like Donkey Kong. What a banana. One thing that I'm grateful for is that with the 5-1 Canucks victory, we only heard that annoying, yet admittedly a bit catchy, Chelsea Dagger song played once. You know the one. Na 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 One small concern is that the Canucks only mustered three shots on goal in the third period. Kind of makes sense though considering they are nursing a 5-0 lead going into the period and probably want to preserve the strong outing by Roberto Luongo. And lastly, it was neat to see how Coach Vigneault spread out the ice time because no one got less than 8 minutes and no one got more than 22 minutes. This should go a long way to preserving the boys' energy as the series moves on. In fact, Andre Albers, he even logged 16 minutes of ice time. And he had zero penalties. Amazing. Astounding. Double A. Andrew Alberts. So thanks for watching. Thanks Sean for helping out. You're welcome. It's going to be a great game two tonight. Chicago's going to come out flying. The fans are going to be behind them. So it's up to our boys to hold them at bay, to withstand those first few minutes, and hopefully take home game two. 
Because imagine them coming home to GM Place on Wednesday night, up two games to zero. Wouldn't that be sweet? God bless. And go Canucks, go!